You're listening to Inside of You with Michael Rosenbaum. It's been a whirlwind of a week. Sure has. It sure has, Ryan. Mm -hmm. I got a puppy. You did get a puppy. And I haven't really slept, so if I look tired, hey, man, it happens. Life happens. You can't always look average. (laughs) Sure. (laughs) Self-deprecating. It's your brand. Yeah, man. Uh, Yeah, just great guests coming up. Uh, Carrie Ann Moss is coming up. Mm. Uh, Paul Paul Walter Hauser. Unbelievable. Mm -hmm. Um, Just a lot of great ones. We had, you know, Brent Spiner and we had... Jonathan Frakes and the Star Trek Star Trek world and that was fantastic. Just Marina Baccarin and mm-hmm. a lot of these are going viral and it's nice to see that you know it's just it's a little podcast. There's a lot of big ones out there. Oh, we got to listen to Joe Rogan. We got to listen to but it's cool that people, you know, some people are listening to this. Take a break from the big guys. Come come listen to the little guys. Yeah, because there's some real content here. There's some things that are going to help you. <laughs> I know it. Well, it helps me. It's like therapy, fuck. It's great content. Thank you, hmm. Brian. Thank you for helping me make great content. I, I do what I can. And uh, a shout out to my editor, Jason Nelkin, and my producer, Bryce. You're rock stars as well. Um, the handles hmm. to follow this podcast. Please follow us if you like the podcast, Ryan. At Inside of You Pod on Twitter, at Inside of You Podcast on Instagram and Facebook. How many times do you think you said that? Uh, ooh, Over 100. Ooh, can, ooh. Probably 100. If a fan wants to make a super cut, a super cut? Oh, that <laughs> super would, cut of that. that. Would take, it wouldn't take that much time because it's always in the intro. I mean, but that's also just, that's a, that's a lot of time. Yeah, don't do that. Why would we want you to do that? We don't want you to do PO that. P.O. Box. For, no. Um, <laughs> look, the Inside of You online store has some great Smallville stuff, some awesome new tumblers that my sister had made. They're awesome. Silver and black Inside of You tumblers. They're badass. Go to the Inside of You online store. Um, yeah, there's that. What else? There's uh, Sunspin, sunspin.com, the band. That's me. We're going to be doing a stage it very soon. We're coming back. We're going to do a stage it, play some live music and laugh with you. Um, and of course, patron. Thank you all my patrons for supporting this podcast. Without you, couldn't do it. Couldn't do the Talkville either. Uh, patreon.com slash inside you become a member. I'll message you right away as fast as I can. And it is me. I do that. Um, so check it out. There's different tiers and different fun stuff. And uh, the, there's these Lex Luthor statues, by the way, on the Inside of You online store. This guy made these bronze fucking two pound, I saw for the effing pound, pound uh, statues for me from Small. Pretty cool. There's only like a few left. All right. Great guest today. Um, he lives up the street from me. Uh, he didn't have to go far. And uh, I've known him for a long time. And what I noticed about him this time was just, he was just a, he was always a good guy. He was always he's super talented he's a great photographer great actor all that stuff but like i just he's a family guy he's a he's a dad he's uh he talks about work and how much he loves work but he also talks about you know we get into you know his father james con the legendary james con and we talk about really interesting stuff like uh, you're gonna hear it so uh i, I really enjoy this one ryan you're gonna say something well, let's just get into it let's get inside of scott con it's my point of view Listening to Inside of You with Michael Rosenbaum. Inside of You with Michael Rosenbaum was not recorded in front of a live studio. Open up that. I'm not a. I don't like talking about myself. I know you don't. Yeah, but you know, today's the day. But, but today's the day. <laughs> but it's it's fun to. I don't have to. You know. Can we curse or no? Of course. I don't have to bullshit with you. Well, you, you know can't say I mean? bullshit. That's, can't say bullshit. No, yeah, yeah. But you know what I mean? I can be f- myself with you because yeah. I know you were friends. I know of you course. for a long time. But, I, you know, usually they're, I don't know. Where does that come from? Do you think that's like, just like, since you were young, it was just something you learned, something you just don't like? Because there's a lot of guys like me, I'm kind of all over the place and you kind of, what you see is what you get. And, you know, you don't need to see that. And by the way, he's making notes of just like, things that are interesting he might not write at all that's fine no he just writes makes his own notes he doodles he has nothing to do right that's fine right ryan yeah no i just keep track of the topic so if i need to find something later i know what came after what all right there you go that's fair yeah uh yeah i don't know man i feel like you uh, i listening to people talk about themselves sometimes is can be obnoxious and i don't ever want to be that guy i'm a listener i like to listen to other people i know i also but I, i talk to i don't know and then also nowadays you say the wrong thing you get in trouble i don't know 
you don't really nobody really wants to hear anybody's real opinion they just want to hear what's like uh right you know the um like the virtue signaling right like everyone wants to say the right thing and do the right I, I thing agree, I and agree so with you, half so. of it feels like it's it's, it's not it's really you're not really authentic. hearing it's not authentic yeah yeah i think i think you're right about that so it's kind of like you know if i can't speak my mind if i'm gonna get lambasted if i'm gonna get all this shit, why open up why tell nobody in other words why i just open up to my friends my family right. i'll tell them what i think and i don't even think i'd have anything to say that people would be mad at right uh, and that's not to say that i have a bunch of opinions that i know are not okay but but political it doesn't matter what you say you say one thing half the world says fuck you yeah right yeah so it's like if, if you really you don't really want to hear what i have to say i don't even know if i have anything that great to say anyway so i don't know i don't know where it comes from i think i also got in trouble once i said the wrong thing once and i'm not gonna be specific but it like it jammed up my life for a couple months and I, I didn't even mean anything i made a joke and it was like you know uh, it said something i didn't even mean and it was like it, it was it was sucked well why is it that like comedians can say pretty much whatever they, they want they can't for the most part they can some of you them, got some of these guys that just are are, are they the doing it again i mean i feel like i feel like i've watched I, I love watching comedy specials and i feel like they're all complaining that they can't say what they want to say anymore i think Chappelle says what he wants to say he's Chappelle. but, but there you go because like, he's like cancel go what are you gonna do you, people you gonna, are gonna still come see me yeah cancel me i don't give a fuck yeah what are you gonna do eat me like that's <laughs> you true know? when you're that successful and that untouchable it's like they don't leave you alone but, yeah uh, you but know. coming up as a young comedian you say the wrong thing that could be it right yeah i mean you say certain things like you know when what's his name kramer from seinfeld went off i mean but deservedly, but that was, deservedly that was, so you shouldn't have done, yeah that was right bad. but like career gone never yeah. heard from well, the guy because it wasn't a joke he no was, he was he was pissed his true colors came yeah, out right that was see that's the thing yeah. and that's what it's hard to differentiate and right? ricky gervais right he says whatever he wants and by the way i wish he'd host the oscars forever me too because when he was he was telling he's like no you know, sit down get up here and like do you, you know, do, do you oh, thank these people and all this bullshit? Just fucking get it. Take this award. Fuck off. Yeah. And uh, I loved it. I loved it. And it was just, I guess, people were like, you know. Yeah, I'm a fan of his. Well, you were nominated. You've been nominated. You were nominated for a uh, Not Golden a Globe. Golden Globe. And Ricky Gervais was the host that year. Really? Yeah. So he announced your name. Uh, I don't know. Who or was... somebody announced you. Yeah. Name. I just, yeah. I don't remember. But yeah, he was there. That was the highlight. How many award shows have you been to in your life not many i think that year i went to that one and then i went i presented at the emmys and then i think that's it that's it i think so do you hate going to these things i don't hate it but i'd rather not do you feel uncomfortable a little bit do you like when they take pictures at the uh what do they call those screens the the red the backdrops what are they called the uh what you know those things that they you can get the the that say the sponsors on the back of it. You're in front of the whatever the fuck it is. Anyway, you, yeah, you you take pictures. You're you're interviewed. Do you feel like a nervousness that you normally don't feel? I have to be on. I have to look good. I didn't used to, but now I do. Now you're censoring. Your, yeah, I'm, I'm I'm worried. You know, I don't want to. I don't want to put my foot in my mouth or make a bad joke or offend anybody. Right, and it's not even that I'm worried about me. I don't want to hurt anyone's feelings. I don't want to like. I don't know. So no, I didn't used to care or, or bother me, but I'm you know. When I was younger, it was like, you know, we went to those things and it was fun. And, yeah, yeah. you know, now I'm like getting a little older. I'm like, I've been there and done that. I'd rather stay home and watch TV, you know? Yeah, I understand that. I mean, I I remember my agent used to say, I need you to go to the Golden Globes. I need you to do this. And one year I went and I, you know, I felt so uncomfortable. Yeah. I'm not nominated for anything. I'm not part of anything. Right. Why should I go to a award right. show or anything? Yeah. Even when people say, hey, will you show up to my thing? I don't. Right. I normally don't do that anymore. I used to. Right. But I, I always felt uncomfortable. Like, I, I don't belong. This is not my time. But I, a lot of people do that. No, I agree. To go somewhere when, yeah, I would never go to the Golden Globes if they didn't, you know, if they right. nominated or Academy Awards. I think I got invited to the Academy Award once to go with somebody, and I was like, I don't want to go. And you didn't go to the Academy Awards. I'd go for just the swag. But you don't get swag if you're just there visiting, do you? Is that true? I don't know. I, th I think when they invite I didn't get swag when I got nominated for a Golden Globe, I don't think. Really? Yeah, they went up to the thing. They're like, you want the sweatshirt? I'm like, a sweatshirt? I want a, a Rolex or something. Like that. <laughs> nothing for me. <laughs> do you... Uh, I think I had to pay for my suit. I don't know. Oh, I, did you? you I, no. Usually they fit you. And I don't go, oh, remember. We're going to dress Scott Conn Yeah, I don't, I don't think they cared. Do you think as you've gotten older... I mean, look, we don't know exactly who we are. 
when you know you know you and i were hanging out back in the late 90s early yeah. 2000s we're like running around we're enjoying it we're yeah do you think there's sort of do you miss that time period sure you do sure what do you miss about it i just had a really good fun life i mean i you know i never had uh I feel like in our, I speak for you too, like our 20s were just fun, weren't they? Oh, I mean, man. all we did was have a good time. We were lucky to have careers at, you know, early in our 20s. And I just, I just remember having a good time. And no like, cameras were on us all the time, like iPhones. And no, you could we just used do, to go out and have a good time. Never worried about and, yeah. anybody going, hey, I wonder if they're filming this. There was like one, like the, you know, there was like a group of paparazzi that, you know, you knew and they, they didn't, you know. They were cool. Yeah. It wasn't like, yeah, everything. Yeah. No cell phones. Yeah, I, I feel like some of the stuff we did back in the day would probably, I don't know, it'd be a, it'd be bad today. Do you like promoting things? Do you like, well, this is a good thing. I'm, we're, today we're also promoting your new movie as One Day as a Lion. Mm -hmm. And I'm glad I love this because then it would be, it's always What would you say if you didn't though? Well, I wouldn't, maybe I just wouldn't bring it up. Really? I don't know if I'd bring it up. Well, I would probably say, hey, you got a new movie coming out. Right, Tell right, us right. about that. Yeah. But what I liked about this, and you kind of downplayed it. You were like, you know, because you, that's who you are. You don't like, oh, you know, you're like, you know, it's good. It's great <clears throat> cast. It's really a good movie. And I'm like, all right. Because you're not like me. Like, oh, man, you got to see this. And you, and I started watching it. And immediately I was like, oh, my God. You knew exactly what this was. It shot so well. And the first 10 minutes, so much shit goes down mm. where... I love that you're like this hit man, mm. but you're kind of, you have the, you have a heart. Right, right. You have I'm like the anti hit. <laughs> you man. should not yeah. be a hit man, no. but you are. And you're like, Oh fuck. Right. You, you see JK Simmons character. Um, you you play Jackie Yeah. and you see him and you're supposed to take him out. And you got this guy who's <laughs> opening scene where the guy's lying on the couch, the guy who's your boss and he's, he just farts and he right. rolls over and answers you. Well, come on, you're going to do this. I didn't write the fart. That was, I post. love farts. Okay. And it's only one fart. It's okay. not a fart movie. guys. Right. It's, 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 it's a very fun intense kind of surprising and i'm watching this and you and you call me like look he's he's a, he's a cowboy he got off his horse or something right, right, right. i can't i can't kill this guy right. <laughs> he's right. like fucking kill him right what are you doing and you put this mustache on mm -hmm. and you go into this place into this diner and whatever i thought was going to happen it didn't turn out that way oh, great. and i love the surprise of it all and i i love the connections and what I love is also that it's grounded in this goofy way, like a Tarantino movie yeah, or like a Coen Brothers. Yeah, those are my favorite kind of movies, man, when you take really like horrible situations and find comedy in them and humor. I think it's the hardest thing to do when you succeed at it. I think it's You know what it works tough. for me hmm. is watching you like not ham it up. You're very subtle. Right. What, even though you're doing some crazy shit. Right. Uh, and you're a little neurotic. Yeah, yeah. And watching J.K. Simmons completely commit to this fucking badass. Right. And when he's speaking, you're like, he, it, it, this is for real. Yeah. Because it could easily be, oh, we're having, we're doing a fun movie. When everybody thinks they're doing this kind of movie, mm. it never works. No, I agree. And that's why I think it works. And it's got like Frank Grillo and J.K. Simmons, and Tara Manning and Virginia Madsen. I always remember her from Candyman. I love her in Candyman. Cause you know, the, the horror movies all around. Yeah. Uh, George Carroll. It's like, and you produced it through an executive producer on this. I wrote it and I, I, you know, produced it, but yeah, there was a, a guy named you Jer you Jeremy. You wrote it. I wrote it. Yeah. There's a guy named Jeremy Rosen who, who produced it. He really should get the credit for producing it. I, I just did the like, yeah, I want a producer credit and I helped cast it a little bit, but he was a producer. Did you call all the actors? Uh, not all, but JK. You called you know JK. I do. We did a movie 15 years ago and uh I've, I'm everything I ever write I'm thinking of him for something and he's oh. such a he's such a no bullshit non-Hollywood guy that like, you know, he reads something if he likes it, he'll tell you if he doesn't like it he you know he doesn't have some agent telling him what he should or should not do. He you know, he if he likes something, he does it. And so you called him and said, look, I got the script. I think it's great. I you're, said, you're, read it. He said, I like it. If the agents can figure out how to pay me what I need to get paid, I'll do it. And So know. he want you know, you got to pay a guy like that. Yeah, of course. You know, I remember I did a movie called Pool Hall Junkies, which didn't do I remember well. That. But it was a fun little yeah, movie. Yeah. And they got Chris Walken. Yeah. And, you know, he got paid a lot. He was most of the budget. Yeah. And he only worked like four days. Yeah. 
That's right. How do we get that? I want to get that. Jesus, I, you just gotta. You gotta do something. You have to have a voice. Like he, he's he's kind of become a parody of himself. You yeah. know, in a way, it's like who every, doesn't have a Chris every, Walken impression? Everybody does walk, and I've yeah. been doing it since the nineties. Yeah, no too. one cares anymore. Me too. Me too. I remember when you used to do it, and people got impressed. Were they impressed go, oh my though. god! Yeah, but I always feel like I do it. Like one, I'm one of the best. I think I'm one of the best. Too. Do you? We're not gonna do it here. No, I could do it. I can do it too. You, you're welcome. Fine. Here we are. It's 1990 all over again. <laughs> all over again yeah but you know i remember uh it, well what like, a bunch <laughs> of assholes fucking asshole. but we that's what we, we do we, we have fun yeah, yeah. um so jk when he said yes you were like boom we're green light uh, no i mean this guy jeremy he makes these movies and he knows how to make them and he doesn't rely i mean i'm sure there's something that has to happen but he said we're making this movie it doesn't matter who we get and you know, so I don't I don't think that because of JK the movie was greenlit. I think we were making the movie with or without him, but this show is sponsored by BetterHelp. When you're at your best, you can do great things. But sometimes life gets you bogged down and you may feel overwhelmed or like you're not showing up in the way you want to. Working with a therapist can help you get closer to the best version of you. Because when you feel empowered, you're more prepared to take on everything life throws at you. And who couldn't use a few better coping skills to be able to handle all of life's curveballs? Look, if you're thinking of giving therapy a try, BetterHelp is a great option. It's convenient, flexible, affordable, and entirely online. Just fill out a brief questionnaire to get matched with a licensed therapist and switch therapist anytime for no additional charge. BetterHelp can help you be the best you possible. Try it today. If you want to live a more empowered life, therapy can get you there. Visit BetterHelp.com slash inside today to get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash inside. Inside of You is brought to you by Qualia Mind. And uh, if you don't think I use it, you see this? This is it right here. This is what I take every day for months now. And you can tell I use it because it's only a quarter of a bottle left, which means I have to get a new bottle. Premium cognitive support, focus, memory, drive. I take it every day with uh, anything else I have to take. I honestly, that I don't take vitamins. I take my medication, you know, antidepressants, what, what have you. And I take quality of mind. And that's it. You know, Ryan, I deal with brain fog. You know, I do. I, I just, I, you know, I forget things. I'm not sharp all the time. You know, those memory lapses, you know, 50. <laughs> and uh, I, I didn't, I told you this before, but I didn't know I was taking it. I thought it was something that I had ordered, but it was something that Qualia Mind, Neurohacker, had sent me. They had sent me because they were going to be a sponsor. So I started taking it a month or so before I even started reading about the product. So then I realized, wait a minute, this is our sponsor. This, and I've used it and it works. So this is great. This is gonna be easy to talk about. So uh, try it. I, I guarantee like in a month, you're gonna say, you know, I, it feels different for me. It, it just definitely feels, I feel a little sharper. I'm not stuttering all the time, stumbling over my words like I normally do. It's really, it really works for me. I, I can't, you know, I can't say much more than that. It is just something that I actually have to take. Our sponsor, Neurohacker, combines 28 of some of the most research-backed nootropic ingredients on Earth into an ultimate brain fuel formula. Qualia Mind, it's been changing people's lives for years. It's also backed, Ryan, by a 100-day money-back guarantee, so you have almost three months to try Neurohacker's Qualia Mind at no financial risk and decide for yourself look I, I i take it every morning it's something i don't miss um it's easy to talk about a product when you actually use it a lot of people just say oh yeah i'm gonna get money from the sponsor i i use all the products and uh this one really gives me some clarity uh see what one of the best fuel formulas on earth can do for your mindset go to neurohacker.com slash iou N E U R O hacker, neurohacker, one word dot com slash I O U for 75% off. That's only $39 a bottle. And as a listener of Inside of You, code I O U at checkout for an extra 15% off your first purchase. 
That's neurohacker.com slash IOU to try Qualia Mind with code IOU to experience life-changing mental performance. These statements have not been evaluated by the Food and Drug Administration. The products and statements are not intended to diagnose, treat, cure, or prevent any disease. Who, um, would you, who was your second choice? That you, that you were like, if JK can't work these dates, I got to have a backup plan. I don't know. <laughs> you don't. You were just saying I gotta. I might have called you. I don't know to play JK's yeah, part. Maybe yeah. I could have done it. Yeah. I mean, not like JK. Yeah. But I don't uh, know, man. Like I said, I, you know, he's. I can't think anybody else now. Certainly not now. If you would ask me, you know, when he had the script and he was making a decision, I could have maybe could have had a thought, but now I don't. Right. You know. You just don't want to say. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <you're right. laughs> Why be disrespectful? How many days is a shoot like this? I think we shot like twenty-four days. Twenty-four days where uh in oklahoma tulsa oklahoma was it fun no it wasn't fun it was brutal man i mean i forget you know look i haven't made we i set out to make you remember when we were coming up in the you know 90s early 2000s independent film was like a thing you know we like grew up doing a lot of independent movies and i feel like that's kind of either slowed down or it's not the same as it used to be and so uh this was definitely you know the director john swab and i were like let's like do an homage to, to you know 90s independent movies um and i forgot how hard they are to make you know back when we were in our 20s making those movies it's like it's not sleeping and you know being up and it was okay losing actors two days before you started shooting all that stuff was like yeah we'll roll with it but now it just everything means a little bit more when you get older and you care a little bit more and you're like, you know more so anyway, there was a lot of a lot of shit went down. It was it was it was brutal. Why is it why is it that when we're younger, we have that sort of fearless attitude? We we don't think about how many hours something's going to take. We'll work to the wee hours. We don't nothing. We don't think about that. But I didn't then, think, do you ever think about sleep when you were in your twenties? I didn't give a shit. And now if I'm like, oh my god, if I don't get home, I'm not going to get my eight hours. You know, that's exactly what I, I was at Depeche Mode last night. I went to see the concert. I wouldn't even go to Depeche Mode because I know I'd be home too late and I'd miss my sleep. Well, the con <laughs> the concert ended, and my friend Ray's we got backstage passes to meet the band. And I go, I'm going to sleep. I got I got to go to sleep. Yeah, and I, I said, it. look, right, and finally. I, I said, I'll do 20 minutes. And I did 20 minutes. I go, hey, I said 20 minutes. Yeah. And we, we got to go. We gotta yeah, go. but I mean, it's the same. I mean, when you were younger, did you have any fear about getting injured? No. Never. No. Now I'm like worried about it. You know, I didn't had, worry about my lines. No. Well, yeah. Well, I always worried about that, but not as much as I do now. <laughs> yeah. I mean, like I've had so many injuries over the years. I know you have too. Yeah. Now I'm like panicked to do anything. I'm like, there's certain things I will risk. You know, I'll do knowing that I could get injured. But back in the day, I used to throw myself off of buildings, do every stunt, skateboard pools, surf big waves, ride motorcycles that didn't have front brakes and were jockey shit. I mean, it did stupid shit that I won't do anymore. It's, you know, I don't know. Same thing. You just you more th get more thoughtful. And there's like a it was great being young. But at the same time, you know, I think we we're a little stupid. You didn't know? you learn, though, from your dad? Because your no. dad, I remember going up to your house and you were working out and your dad was there and he was working out and we talked and we got along right away because he was. Uh, so you were uh, comparing it, how many back surgeries <laughs> each one of you had, right? Yeah. I also became friends with Stallone on set because of the same. You had the same surgery. Uh, you know, that fucking guy's got no bedside, man. I think it was fucking. But, um. <clears throat> <laughs> but your your dad had a lot of injuries yeah. weren't his knees shot his hips what how many issues did he have i mean i think my dad had 15 surgeries in his life from what i mean he was also an idiot when he was younger i mean <clears throat> he also was you know he he rode motorcycles he was a cowboy a rodeo cowboy he did all of his own stunts he i mean every dumb thing you could do I mean, when I say dumb, I mean it in a, a, a We all do. We don't, we don't yeah. learn from mistakes. And I kind of looked up to that when I was a kid. I'm like, I want to have 11 surgeries. You know, like I, I I actually thought like that's what makes you a man. You know, you get a lot of surgeries. So. That's what makes you a pussy. That's, that's what, what I've become a pussy. Really? Well, yeah. ultimately. Can you say that? Can but you, you say pussy now? <clears throat> Probably not. All right. All right. But what, what I'm, what I, the difference is my old man, he never, he never got to where we are, where he became cautious. He was still wiling out till he was in his 70s and early 80s. I mean, he he did a back surgery that they told him, like, you can't do this surgery. He's like, I'm going to do it, you know? And he would still... Um, <clears throat> so I think the difference is, is I learned as we get older, we got to age a little bit. You know, I've been 
training Brazilian jiu-jitsu for 25, 30 years almost. I don't train the way I trained when I was in my 20s because if I did, I'd have more surgeries and I'd be more jammed up. But you got to, I think you got to adjust and, you know, uh, be the best 40 and be the best 50 and be the best 60, not at 60 still trying to be 40. You know, right. that's when you get jammed up. I know. I'm still playing ice hockey. Yeah, but you're smart, man. You don't, you don't do the same stupid shit. It's you not do. like contact hockey. I don't like. Do you guys out. don't hit each other? Inadvertently. Sometimes you. But you're not like slamming no, dudes no, against no, the boards. No, nothing like that. But it just gives so me. So you're playing like a little old man hockey. But you know what, though? It's all young guys who are junior hockey players, guys that came out of the NHL. And it's, <clears throat> it's fun. There's respect. We don't like jokers. We don't like guys who don't know what the hell they're doing and they get their sticks up in your face and right. things like that because they're not that good. Same thing with jujitsu, man. At this age, you like roll with dudes who like get it and want to, you know, right. not out there trying to, you know, win gold in yeah. the garage. It's That's like, the thing. If they're going after the, they're going out, they're scoring in men's leagues, hot men's league hockey. And that means everything to them. They shouldn't be playing with That's us. That's right. Because we were talking about the other night, I, sc I scored this cool goal, and I don't, I don't brag, but it was everybody was like, "Dude, what the fuck?" And I was, and they're like, "You're not gonna celebrate?" And I'm like, no, "I learned not to do that in hockey. You don't ham it up. You just go. You got, you got to be humble. You got to reserve it. Let you. They don't like that shit. They yeah. don't like hot dogs. They no, don't that's like, more. Oh, yeah. No, that's more gangster anyway. Like back in the day, remember dudes would score a touchdown and they just drop the ball in the end zone. Oh god, now they're fucking making a dance. But I love that man. That was class. You flip the ball to the ref. Like here, we've done this before. I'm gonna do this again here not anymore no you, you score a goal and you act like you it's the greatest thing in the world everyone's like oh it must be his first goal you know? yeah it's <laughs> true i agree with that um what was it like well you know first of all i want to talk about like you did 10 years on hawaii 5 right something yep. like that yep i remember talking to you mm -hmm. and going back and forth hawaii is by the way like five six hour flight yeah was that a good time in your life was it one of those things where you're like you, you 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 liked it for a while and then you were like sort of felt like you were done because i kind of felt like that in smallville and but you had this contract and like for me i had you know i'd finish it out i had to do my work mm -hmm. i had to, what was it like being on a show for that long and knowing like i've done this i've said this we've done because it's got to get redundant yeah man ups and downs like you know looking back I th it was a great time i got to live in hawaii one of my daughters was raised in hawaii a little bit like there's you know a lot of positives but there are a lot of negatives too you know as an actor if you do the same thing for 10 years, it's like everybody's seen everything you got. You know, it's like we came up looking at actors who you'd see, maybe they do two movies a year. Yeah. You know, look at, you know, I mean, someone like Leonardo DiCaprio, he does a movie every couple of years. Every time he comes out the box with like this new thing, and you're like, you're seeing stuff you ain't never seen. If he did a show for 10 years, it's like, we've seen everything you got, you know? Yeah. So it's like, it's it's hard to not become shtick like it's it's like oh he's doing shtick you know it's like i'm doing a new show now and i'm like god i wonder I'd, I'd like it to be as far away as possible as that other role but it, it's still me like yeah it's like you've seen my whole bag of tricks yeah but there's an exception uh and it's it's also a lot of luck somebody like brian cranston who did malcolm in the middle mm -hmm. and you're like oh the yeah. goofy guy and then you see him and you're like whoa he transformed but he, to your point, he didn't show all that stuff. Yeah, but you know, <clears throat> Hollywood, I feel like, does not have a giant imagination, right? Like, I did a procedural show for 10 years. What's the first thing I get offered? Another procedural cop show. Yep. So, how Brian Cranston was able to be Malcolm in the middle and then turn into uh, 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 Breaking Bad? Wayne? No. Wayne, whatever. What the, was his name in Breaking Bad? Walter White. Walter, Walter White. White. Um, Wayne White, Walter White. Wayne White. Uh, you know, that's, that's rare, you know? So he, he was able to, I mean, I remember I, I didn't watch Malcolm in the middle, uh, but I just remember people being the guy from Malcolm in the middle is doing this. It's like, yeah, man, he's an actor. Like he's meant that's to do other stuff. That's the thing. But studios are the same way. <laughs> yeah. They're the same way as regular people. Which they is, yeah. Which is why if you can write or you do have, you know, uh, if you can, can produce or you can direct, if you got. As an actor, like I think that that's the only way you're going to tell them, hey, I can do something else, is if you do it yourself. Yeah. You know? um, and um, yeah, so anyway, Hawaii 5 the, there were pluses and minuses. I mean, also, you know, I didn't know what a procedural television show was when I signed on to do that. I had no idea. I, I, I thought it was going to be one thing and then it was something else. So, um, but overall, I look back at it as, you know, a, a blessing and, 
you know, it was good from, you know, I became, a, I got married, I became a family man over there. And I, you know, I love to surf. I love jujitsu. Like the culture over there fit me perfectly. But then at the same time, I miss home. I miss New York. I miss going, you know, doing movies. You know, I didn't do a movie for 10 years. That's crazy. Oh, because yeah. you were working. I was working. Nine months a year. Yeah. <clears throat> um, but, uh, but yeah, man, I, it, I definitely look back at it as uh, something great, but there was, parts of it that were shitty you know do you uh are you one of those actors who just loves to work you don't care exactly as long as you're on set and you're as long as you're acting are you happy or are you like hey i i want the content to be something that i could actually be proud of or do we, you kind of fluctuate because you gotta also have a family and all that stuff yeah i mean listen i've changed a lot uh, it used to be I, I never wanted to do something i didn't love but then you realize man this is a business and i gotta make a living so sometimes you gotta do something you don't love um uh, but as much as I'd like to think that I'd like, I'd be happy not having to work and be retired. There's no, there's no way, you know, I, I, I'd, I'd last two weeks, a month before I'd be like, I got, I got to get back to it. We're creative people, man. We're not meant to retire. I think when you're, when I'm 80, if I've made all the money in the world and I'm chilling <laughs> and I don't need a dollar, I don't need anything. I'm still going to be hungry to work. Right. And you know, and the money is, you know, I didn't care about money when I was when in our 20s. I was like, I didn't need much, you know, it's like as long as I can pay the rent and eat, you know, yeah. decent food. But now it's like there's things I like to do with my family and I want to travel and I want to travel nice and I want to go here and I want to go here. And it's like all that stuff costs money. So I think it's like, you know, it's a balance. This podcast is brought to you by Dove Men Plus Care. guys. Do you get distracted during the day thinking about your underarm sweating or itching or emitting an odor? Ugh. Do those thoughts keep you from showing care when it counts? New and improved Dove Men Plus Care Antiperspirant with 72-hour sweat and odor protection and one-quarter moisturizing cream helps you forget about your underarm so you can be present for the moments that matter. Don't let underarm insecurities keep you at arm's distance from the ones you care about. Buy new and improved Dove Men Plus Care antiperspirant wherever personal care products are sold. This message is sponsored by Discover. Did you know you could reduce the number of unwanted calls and emails with online privacy protection? The latest innovation from Discover. Discover will help regularly remove your personal info, like your name and address, from 10 popular people search websites that could sell your data and they'll do it for free. Activate in the discover app, see terms and learn more at discover.com slash online privacy protection. But I'd like to have, uh, you know, I'm going to keep referring to Leo. I don't know why, but would I like to have his career? Yeah. But there's only one of him. You know what I mean? Like yeah. not everybody gets to just pick what they want to do. You know, no. a lot of people, I did this, I'm doing another procedural show. And someone's like, why would you do another cop show? I'm like, cause that's what they offered me. And I needed the What's money. The show? <laughs> like it's called alert. Alert. It's on Fox. Um, hey, so how many seasons? We've done one. We're about to start a second season in July, but yeah, man, why'd you do that? Well, cause it was the best version of what they were asking me to do. Like, you know, they didn't you say, wanna work. You wanna... they didn't, I didn't get off a of Wi-Fi vote and they didn't go, Hey, do you want to star in the new Scorsese movie? Like that didn't happen. <laughs> <clears throat> I would have said yes. You yeah, know, maybe. Yeah. <clears throat> but yeah, ba man. back to the, uh, my point about, I said, studios are sort of like every man. They're not because I'll, I'll, the, the difference is, is the, the folks, the real folks out there who watch our movies, watch our TV shows, when they love someone, they are so supportive and they, you know, they want to see you work. Mm -hmm. They want to see you work. Mm -hmm. But the studios are like, he did that. No, not the fact that you were great. It was a great show. People loved you. Mm -hmm. None of that matters. Right. It's just a matter of, you know, it's, it's, it's much harder now. It's definitely harder now with, um, you know, and we, I talk about this every episode about all the streamers. I don't, I don't, I, don't, I mean, Chick-fil-A has a streamer out now. What do you mean? You, they make they're making content. Good for them. Chick Fil A. Yeah. By the way, if they got the paper, I'll show up. I mean, <laughs> right? Would you do a Chick Fil A? It's show? true, but now, now <clears throat> nowadays is like I think there's some ego with me, where, uh, you know, I want to. You, if you're going to do something, you want to be seen. I don't want to just do something and nobody sees me. I've done plenty of those projects, so you want to do something that has the most, ch the biggest chance of success in terms of. 
feeding what you, your hunger of yeah. acting mm. and that people will receive and you could maybe make an impact and do something yeah i mean what's worse than putting your heart and everything into something and no one sees it that sucks we've man. all done that yeah man. man oh my god have we done that yeah you know but you know at the end of the day what are you looking at you're looking at my shed you and steve martin yeah i was yeah that was uh uh I, I wore a terrible wig see the problem when i was bald is uh, I started getting some movie offers, but I was bald, and they gave me the worst fucking wigs. I'm, the wigs wig, have gotten good now, now, haven't now they? but they were so bad. And so I did a couple movies, and then I was just like, "I'm not sorority boys." The wig was fucking an atrocity. Uh, back, uh, what is that movie called? Bringing Down the House with Steve Martin. It was it was terrible. But I, I got to work with Steve Martin. I didn't care. He, yeah. was, he was great. You know, yeah. I got to make him laugh, and he made me laugh, mm -hmm. and I learned from him. One thing that was cool was watching Steve Martin after, at the end of every take going to the modern and going oh, oh yeah i can go bigger there i can do this oh, yeah. and like watching what he could do where a lot of actors were like no nope, just you know i don't want to see the monitor i don't want i think it's different with drama you don't want to go watch yourself like on you know but how do you feel about that are you sort of removed from that you're like i don't need to see it as good it you depends like it? it depends uh definitely if i'm into the thing that i did i want to see it but i've i don't i've watched out of 280 something episodes of hawaii 50 i've watched maybe four of them and I just did a season of a show, 10 episodes. I haven't seen a frame. Not because I didn't like it. I just, I don't see how it's going to help. Help you. It's not going to help me. If I don't like it, it's going to bum me out. And then it's going to bring that with me. And if I do like it, it's not going to do much for me. I'm going to go, all right, well, you know. So I, I generally, I'm going to, I'm going to watch it if it's something I want to watch. That makes sense. Yeah. How does it feel? Because I've always known you not to be like a, not to say you weren't a family guy, but you were like, you know, you've got a photography book that's awesome. I love that book. Thank you, man. Are you going to do another one? I did another one. I have two of them, uh, but no, not anymore. What, what was the first one called? Uh, volume One. Oh, tough, tough title. Yeah. yeah. And then the second one was called Vanity. Um, but I'm, I'm, I'm not shocked, but like I always knew you as a photographer, always taking pictures, yeah, always yeah. doing it. And I was just like, wow, he's also good at that. Oh, thank you. So you have two you have two volumes? Two well volume 1 was just the title but uh volume 1 and then the other one's called Vanity but yeah. But I don't shoot photos anymore. Why? I don't know man. I think uh <clears throat> when I when I was shooting I was shooting film and when digital photography and phone cameras camera phones became like a big thing. I still think that that's an art and I think that people take great photos with their phones or digital. It just it it wasn't what excited me about photography. Like when I was taking photos I loved traveling and having rolls of film and not knowing if I exposed it properly, not knowing if when I come home waiting to see what I get out of the dark room, like that's part of what I really loved about it. Having only 32 shots, you know, to get what you want or running and, you know, running around and only getting one snap of something that you liked. Now digital turned into this thing where it's like, let's take 50 and one of them will be good or <clears throat> and then it was also a medium like i didn't understand it like I, I i literally it took me years to figure out how to shoot a film camera and how to make it work and how to understand exposures and f-stops and shutter speeds and like it took me a while to learn that and then digital was like a whole new program that i didn't understand so i just decided hey you know i'm i'm I did it the way I wanted to do it and I'm not I'm no longer interested the way I was. So I guess that means I was never really a real photographer. I if you see guys go get these books or take a look at them because they're they're fantastic. Thank I wouldn't you, say man. that, man. They're just Thank they're you. just they're epic. And, Thank you, dude. But but like, you know, but why can't you still do old school? I I I don't know. I I totally could. I just I guess Maybe the passion's not there. <clears throat> passion's you have a family, not there. you have the acting career producing It's all not that. even that. Yeah, it was like my lifestyle at the time really was you know, uh, it was easier. It was easier, and I was traveling by myself. I didn't have anybody else to worry about. I mean, you asked like, you know, you never would imagine that I'd be a family man. I didn't either, man. Like the way I, you know, grew up in my twenties. I mean, I should be, I could have been a serial killer or locked up or something crazy. <laughs> but you know, now, man, I love my family. Like, I, I really like my wife a lot, which blows my mind. I never, if you told me twenty years ago I'd be in a happy relationship, I. I would have told you no chance, you know, but I'm happy with my life. I love my kids. I like being with my kids, you know. It's hard going away. I used to love going on location. It was like my favorite thing in the world to go just be somewhere else for three months. Now I hate it. You're an old school guy where, uh, I mean, look, back when you grew up, mm. I mean, you had a movie star as a dad. Yeah. It's no secret. Yeah. I mean, 
you know, I talked to Kiefer about it and, you know, he, he said some things about, you know, growing, cause it's gotta be different. I had a dysfunctional family and for all, many different reasons. And, um, but what, what was it like, like growing up that you could recall? Was it, was it, he was always working? No, he didn't work a ton. Um, when I was growing up, he, um, I mean, I look, my dad was, he wasn't, you're you're a common no like a normal actor guy you know he was really good at everything he was an amazing athlete he was good on a motorcycle he was a cowboy he he was he could play any instrument he picked up anything and could get good at it he was like a um uh, uh not a mimic but like if you should if he saw someone doing something he could pick that thing up and he could do it he was you know, I wouldn't even say jack of all trades because he was really good at all of everything. You know, he was like a master at a lot of different things. And uh, to me, him being an actor was just something else that he was good at. You know what I mean? To me, he wasn't like an actor. He was just somebody who was really tough, really handsome, really smart. Girls liked him. He was good at everything. Like, being, that, that's got to be hard for you as a kid to see, my dad does everything how am i going to aspire to no i mean i think it made me want to do be good at stuff and you know he used to tell me like he'd say if you're going to do something be the best at it or don't do it and i think you know if you say that today people are like don't tell your kid that if you know blah, blah, blah. like he was like first place is for second place is the first loser you know what i'm saying like that, <laughs> that's how he was right and i really appreciate that and i don't think that that's like accepted today and um no it wasn't hard it was really something awesome to look up to so to answer your question he, to me he wasn't an actor he wasn't working a ton when i was younger um but when he did it was just something else that he did really well to me do, does that make yeah, sense absolutely um, you, had, you had a respect for him yeah he what he was uh, to, uh, as far as i was concerned he could have played shortstop for the yankees do you know what i mean or yeah. he could have been a professional fighter he could have been a prof he was a professional rodeo cowboy he was you know he he could ride dirt bikes i mean he he, he just was good at stuff so i mean in, in the movie rollerball did he really learn how to do all that a stuff? thousand percent a thousand That's percent crazy and like yeah he was he you know he um he, he he wasn't an actor to me is what i'm getting at did he know? have i mean he he has this innate intensity about him that you're just you watch him and you want to listen to him yes he was that intense was he intense with you yeah i mean he my dad didn't ever have to i mean you know maybe he gave me a whack once or twice we've but, all been whacked but he never had to he just looked at me funny That's, and i was yeah. like okay my mom too my mom was tough like my mom you know whatever she looked at me sideways and i just did what she said i mean <laughs> you know i never i never we don't scare our kids you know today like right but i was scared of both of my parents in a healthy way i feel like yeah you know um but you know what they also you know i don't want to sit here and talk them both up like they were they were both fucked up a ton you flawed. know what i mean flawed and made mistakes and it was a different time and but um but anyway to answer your question he uh i just i felt like i got to grow up with someone who had a lot of amazing qualities to look up to. And now as I get older, the qualities that weren't worth looking up to were also a lesson. You know what I mean? Right. He's like- That was gonna be my question, right? But yeah, he's a, he, was like a, he, he was like watching a hero's tale and a cautionary tale at the same time and getting the best out of both. And I think, man, that's all we can do, right? Like yeah. get the best, you know? I try to tell my daughter, she was like, this kid was mean to me yesterday. I'm like, look, how that kid treated you, all you can do in life is see how people do things, how it makes you feel, and decide whether or not you want to make people feel that way. Or, you know what I mean? Like, Yeah, that's great advice. And just like, you know. You don't have to be that way, right. Yeah, you don't have to do that. Or you can choose to do that. Do you let, you know, if you know you want to make people feel that way, you can do that. I, I hope you don't, but, yeah, you know, everything's, ev every, if we're smart, everything is either uh, uh, something to live up to or push or stay away from. And I think, my parents were so black and white in that way that I was able to learn the good and and be like, ooh, I'm not gonna do that, you know? Yeah, see, my, my father never, he had never admitted to all the shit that he had done. He never wanted me to know about mm -hmm. his drinking and the drugs yeah. and the women and yeah, the, yeah, all yeah. that. He, he, so he lied to me. <laughs> yeah. He made it like he was perfect. Yeah. And maybe the how he, I don't know, in his way, he was trying to protect me. Mm -hmm. And what it did was kind of make me go, 
what the fuck? So mm-hmm. I have to be perfect. Yeah. Well, I guess you're perfect, dad. Right. Because was, was your dad, the, the, the James Conn, if you don't know who the fuck you But fuck that's off. trip. That's, that's, that's a, that's, um, I think that's two things. I mean, not to analyze your father and your relationship, but I feel like there's, there's de- there was definitely a, a thing. And I think that generation of those dudes who they didn't really look back and go, oh, what did I do wrong? Or how can I fix this? Or like therapy wasn't big when your old man was a kid, nor when my man was a kid. Like I, I approach things now and I, I go like, okay, what was my part in that? They didn't do that shit. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? My dad would be like, oh, I did a little cocaine. I'm like, come on, dude. Come on. <laughs> come on. You did a little coke. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, it wasn't to protect me. It was like, that was the mechanism of those people, I feel like, to be like, ah, that's you, it's in the past. Let's not even go there. Like, you know what I mean? Understandable, yeah. So I think that, and also there's, you know, what you were saying too. There's, I'm sure there's some some issues and of course. bad shit behind it too. But for the most part, it's just a, <laughs> what he say, a different kind of what people. What do you say, Scotty? I love you. Of course. Always felt that. Of 100%. See, that's. And, and his father never told him he loved him. He knew he loved him. My dad used to tell, I don't want to make this whole thing about my old man. No, it's not. It's like five minutes. But he used to tell me the story about his his father. My grandfather was a monster. I mean, and, and I mean that in a beautiful way. He was a tough, tough, tough dude. His hands were like the size of, his fingers looked like cigars. I mean, he was just a tough, he was a butcher. You know, he owned a butcher shop in Manhattan. And, he, you know, he was just a, he packed meat all day long. I mean, he was just a big, tough Jew. You know what I mean? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and, um he would never say i love you to my father he took his belt off every night put it on the table if anybody moved they got a whack i mean he was a tough 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 dude never said i love you and then one day and that's my dad grew up thinking like hey i guess my father just doesn't love me or whatever (sighs) and then my dad started getting successful and he would say pop what do you think of this and his dad'd be like yeah you know whatever Mm -hmm. and then one day some dude that was with my own, my grandfather in a bar pulled my dad aside and go, I just want you to know that your dad was just in there talking you up to everybody for hours. My son's this, my son's that, my son's this, my talking him up. I love him. He's the best. He's the best this. So he just didn't do it in front of him. And that was, that's like, that was my dad, one of the highlights of his life hearing this dude tell oh, him man. that behind his back, his father would talk him up in the bar every night. Do you know what I mean? It sounds exactly like my father. <clears throat> so, so you yeah. know, my dad f- knew his father loved him. So anyway, going back to like, you know, hero's tale or cautionary tale, like my dad realized, you know what? I'm not going to do that with my kid. I'm going to tell my kid I love him every day, which is something that he did um, because he learned from his, from, from his old man. Anyway. What's your favorite part that he's done? Thief. That's the number one. 100%. Was he nominated for that? No, of course not. No. But today he would be. Today it would have been. Yeah, that was like a normal, you know, that was just like, oh, there's a good movie. Rollerball, Gambler. He should have been nominated for all three of them. All of them. Rollerball's still ahead of its I time, love I think. Rollerball. What a fucking great movie. I think they were trying to remake it or something. They did remake it. It was dog shit. But the, the, <laughs> they, the, the, um, if you put Rollerball out today, I still think it's ahead of its time. I mean, that's yeah, how good it was. It was. You got to see Rollerball, Ryan. Thief too, man. Thief. Thief to me is Michael Mann's best movie. I think. Did, did you did you make your wife watch all you, you, your movies or his movies, or do you want to educate her at all in the beginning? Like, hey, you, if you don't know my dad, you got to see these movies. <laughs> it's funny when I met my wife, she was like already obsessed with Elf. So she, <laughs> she's like, I love that. Yeah. He's great. And I cry yeah. at Elf every freaking yeah. time. Whenever people meet me, and they go, "Oh, your dad's the guy in Elf." I'm like, "No, no, that's not. No, my, my dad's dad a Godfather. Is. My yeah. dad's thief." My yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's nice to know because a lot of times when you have the tough dad and you see that in the world, like I'm getting people, hot. Can I take my? Yeah, name? please take your take it all off. But I think people perceive you at, or your your pops as like you know. He's, he was probably hardcore. And, I, and, I, and I'm, I even wondered, I was like, I wonder if, you know, he wasn't there. Was like, I'm learning all these things that are nice to know that like, wow, you had this deep respect for him. Mm. And I bet you got closer towards the end, of course, right? Yeah. I mean, there was a, you know, there was a big stretch where we weren't close, but yeah, at the end of his life, we definitely got close again. And um, when I was younger, man, he was, you know, from born to 10, that was like my, my road dog, you know? I mean, I went everywhere with him and then, you know, Things happen, you know. How was, I mean, honestly, how, how was it? How did you do it? Because I know you kind of just went away for a while when he passed. Was that like? 
I didn't go on Well, it. Instagram. I don't that. have Instagram. Okay. Well, Let's say this it, out loud. That's a phony fucking account. Okay. Whoever that guy is, he's a scumbag. I'm going to stop following him. Don't follow him. He really, I, I, someone sent me that. He wrote, I need to go away, da 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 I, I, yeah, he, that's not me. I don't guys, have an he's, Instagram he's not account. On Instagram. No, but it, you, it's okay that you think that. But it's a bummer to me that someone, you know, he posts pictures. Well, it says of, official. No, and he, <laughs> and he posts <laughs> pictures of my dead friends and writes, "Miss you, buddy." Like I, I want, you know, like I don't want to be violent, but like this dude deserves to get slapped in him? the mouth. I, I've tried. Instagram won't even take him down. Watch, I'm, I'm, I'm. Uh... It, it obviously uh, gets right. me pissed off. But anyway, I didn't go anywhere. No, that's some dude f flexing like he's me. Dick. Well, how did he's a yeah. cornball. Well, how did, I mean, how did, how did you deal with it? How did I deal with death? Yeah, with, well, with pa the passing of your father. I, I'm okay with death, man. I, death doesn't fuck me up. I mean, it I, doesn't. No, it was man. expected. It was sort of like you were. Yeah, I mean, it was. Listen, man, you know, he wasn't happy at the end of his life and he was having a rough time. And, you know, part of it was. I don't want to say a relief, but relief that he wouldn't have to suffer anymore. You know, yeah. it's like, you know, it's like, he's like a, he's a, um, he was a, 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 like a quarter horse who couldn't run anymore. You know what I mean? Or like a thoroughbred, or better yet, a thoroughbred who couldn't run anymore. It's like, it's, that's no, yeah. you know, he's spent his whole life being active and running around. And then he's like jammed up for the last few years of his life. It's hard to watch, you know? Um, but, um, but yeah, man, I think I think it's important to to be um, to get older and understand. And we all got to deal with death, man. And I think yeah, that's it's, a hard thing for me. Is it? Yeah, yeah. man. I mean, it's like I, I'm not to bring it up again, but I said, "Hey, your your dog passed," you mm -hmm. know, like, and you were like, "Oh, thanks for bringing that up." It's like <laughs> I was kidding. No, no, I know you were, but I know it. It, it, it was it was hard. It's like, man, I had a dog that was. <laughs> I love that we're talking about dogs now, but. Uh, <laughs> You know, <clears throat> as hard as it is to lose someone that was so massive and so important, and um, it, it was time, man. You know, he wasn't living a good life anymore. You know, That's same thing key. with my mom, man. When she passed, it was like she wasn't living a good life anymore. Right. Neither was my dog. That's uh, that's why I brought it up. I and I didn't want to compare my parents to my dog, but <laughs> I had, you know, you remember, I had the greatest dog of all time. Yeah. I think. When that dog died, I'd never been sadder in my life. Yeah. But I was ready and I was like, she can't walk anymore. Like, I'm not, I'm not, this is a dog that jumps in the air and catches balls. Like, what well, you know, I feel like, you know, we 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 put dogs to sleep. That's the nice thing to do. We don't do that with people. We keep them alive and keep Unless them alive. Unless you move to Oregon. Them. Right, right. Then I'm gonna do that. All right. Um, <laughs> but yeah, we like keep people alive and you know, we gotta we gotta be able to understand and and be okay with death or we're going to be messed up later in life. And I think, you know, not even, not even talking about my old man, but I think some people, like I said, you know, when you're 70, you got to be 70, man. You can't try to be still be 40 because you're not going to be ready for it. We're all, it's, it's coming for all of us. We're right? all dying. We're all dying. And I do it too, man. Like I, I, we spent our whole lives trying to be successful so that we can enjoy our lives. And now I'm successful and I'm like, oh, I wish I was 30 so I can enjoy more years of this, but it don't work that way. We gotta work real hard to get to a point and then you get what you want and then it's like, shit, time, clock's ticking, man. It's, Who are you? What do you mean? I mean, I just like, you have this maturity, this innate maturity about you of life and like just dealing with things. It's like, I can understand now, you're married with a kid, you're a good father. Yeah. You just seem like, uh, it's not that you were, I, I didn't really know you that well, Yeah. but, I just I, the, your perspective on things is just like I, I want to feel that way. What well, you do? Do you go to therapy? Twenty years. Okay, good. Twenty years in. Yeah, we go to therapy too. I got Ryan into therapy. What do you mean, couples therapy? No, no, we're not a couple. We should though. We should be a couple. But what do you mean? You I mean, go to therapy separately? No, no, what? You go to therapy together? I Who? No, Ryan. I got Ryan into therapy. Oh, you got him into right, therapy. Right, right. <laughs> yeah, man. Look, if you're look, if you drove me to therapy, is what he's trying to say. I, I drove me to I therapy. It. If you're if you if you're blessed and you got the the means to see a therapist and you don't, you that's a that's a goofy mistake, man. If you think all your problems are solved and you can figure them out or you can figure out yourself, you're wrong. You're just fucking wrong. I agree, man. I agree. I my mean, dad I, won't do it. He's like, you know what he said to me when my when my sister passed. He said, "Do you think anybody?" I could relate to anybody. Like they understand how I feel losing a daughter. And I go, yeah. Mm. People lose their entire families in car crashes mm -hmm. and planes and cancer. And you're not alone. Right. 
go listen to other people and know you're not alone and yeah. how are they getting through it yeah he just not for him yeah i mean it wasn't for my old man either you know? he never went to therapy he tried but he'd you know he <laughs> he would go i'm dealing with this i'm dealing with this i'm dealing with that i go go see my therapist he go see my therapist and he go ah, it didn't help i'm like hold on it just doesn't happen in an hour <laughs> It took me 10 years oh, in, yeah. in therapy to go like, oh, now I'm figuring out. My therapist told me the same thing 15 times, 20, 30, 50, 60, 70 times. And I'm like, oh, now I hear what you're saying. Then I forget it. And he's got to tell it to me again a year later. You know, I mean, mm -hmm. it's a, uh, I keep a time. I don't care if I'm in, uh, you know, Morocco for six months. I'll keep my time and I'll call in when I can, but I'm not letting my time up. You know, And you notice when you're not going to therapy. I don't not go to therapy. You just go. Yeah. You're that disciplined. Yeah. And sometimes we're sitting around talking about, you know, nothing. But, you know, it's, I don't know. I think it's, it's helpful. And I think we're all, we're all screwed up a little bit. I'm just lucky to be able to, to have a therapist, but. But yeah, I don't know. Where are we going? No, with this? this is this is great. But by the way, I, I know you haven't listened to the podcast, but like, believe it or not, I didn't I didn't do this podcast at first. I thought, oh, you're gonna make some money. But mm. that's not true. Mm. You, you don't. And it takes a long time. And right. the reason people started listening was, I think, because I started opening up, guests started opening up just to, and it helps. You wouldn't believe how this conversation will help so many people. Oh, that's good. To it's, know. it's Ryan. Yeah, that's the whole point, yeah. It's the whole point. And I, I get so many people to come up to me and other actors and like, and I'm like so surprised that just being vulnerable, mm -hmm. just saying, hey, this is my story. Mm -hmm. You can take what, what you want from it. So I appreciate that. Dude. Oh, yeah, of course. But like you've done, you, I'm not going to mm -hmm. sit here and name it, but you've done tons of movies, tons of TV. You've produced, you've directed, you write. I remember you wrote a script. I think you, it was your script. Might have been Michael Malley's when I went up to your house. And it was, you asked me to read with you and Giovanni Rabisi and Michael Malley. Do you remember that? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I don't know. Was I, it I think, a play? I think it was a play. Yeah. Did you write it? I think so, I think yeah. you wrote it, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Because you're pretty prolific. I, I assumed it was you. But like all these things that you've done, you've been around royalty, mm. right? You, like who, who's someone that you, you've you got to know a little more than just like, oh, hey, and they remember you. Like, did you get to hang out with Jack Nicholson a lot? Did you get to hang out with any big guys that you're a little star? You mean as a kid? As a kid, as a no whatever. man, my dad had me around cowboys, never bikers, actors. bikers, yeah, Hollywood. He, you know that <clears throat> he used to tell me they're all goofs. You know he didn't have any Hollywood. Bobby Duvall, that was his one buddy, and that's one dude I remember as a kid seeing around, and that was his friend. And he was somebody, so he knew you. You were around. Yeah, that was somebody he respected, and you know. But my dad, I think. He used to, he didn't, I don't know if he gave like Hollywood a good enough chance, you know, because he was like a tough kid from the Bronx, grew up in Queens. And he just came out here and he thought these guys, you know, this is a bunch of, you know, Bullshit. phonies, right? So that's why he went into rodeo. That's why he hung out with, you know, bikers. And that's why- That he, is so rare. He, he was closer to the stuntmen than he was the actors. Do you know what I mean? His best friends on the movies were the stuntmen. Um so I didn't know. There was not a lot of actors uh, that I met when I was a kid, aside from Bobby Duvall. But um, yeah, he was, and I, but, you know, and I think he's wrong because in my experience, I met some great, great people in this business. And you know, I always, who are some of the great people you've met that you really like? You call friends? I mean, honestly, man, I've never. I don't. The most talented people I've met are always the nicest people. Isn't that true? It's crazy, and it is. I used to it's think true. like, oh, uh, you know, like. Coming onto the set of Ocean's Eleven, I thought like, all right, so and someone's going to be a jerk. Yeah. I mean, I was blown away. I mean, that was, you know, I was 25 years old coming on there with a chip on my shoulder like, oh, someone's going to be a goof here. I mean, from Cheadle to Matt Damon to Brad Pitt to George Clinton to Elliot Gould, like you can't decide who's a better guy. They're all such good dudes. You know what I mean? Yeah. They're all so talented and... and um, Oh, Elliot Gould, that's another one. I, I grew up around friend. Elliot. Yeah. He was cool? Yeah, my dad and Elliot were close, and I grew up with Elliot's son, a kid named Sam. We were always friends, and so yeah, Elliot and Duval. I guess those are the two. Those are big ones. Those are big ones. Uh, what was it like working with Paul Walker? Do you remember it? Did you work? Yeah, with him man, that was my man. Um, I, uh, you know, I met Paul at a, a reading. We did Varsity Blues, and I did a reading with him and the whole cast. Uh, and it was the first time I met him. We did a reading at this, the Red Lion Hotel in Austin. And they said, hey, you know, there's only one car per two cast members. And 
we, you know, I knew that he had, he surfed and I surfed. I'm like, hey, you want to share a car? And he's like, yeah, let's share a car. That day we were doing like donuts in the car. By the end of that day, we got an apartment together. And by the end of the shoot, we were best friends, training jujitsu together, you know. Wow. Going like he was, he was my, that was like the first actor friend of mine. Like that we were tight, tight, tight. And then, you know, my relationship with Paul was always, um, we didn't have to see each other for a year and then we'd pick up right where we left off. You know, we did that other movie together into the blue and, um, he was always, uh, he was, I feel like we had a lot in common, man. He was a, he was a down to earth dude and well, not to say that I'm a down to earth dude, but I mean, we just liked a lot of the same stuff and he was a no bullshit, non Hollywood type of dude. I mean, he's, I still... Till the day he died, I'm pretty sure he never really turned his cell phone on. You know, I'm sure. Really? He, I mean, he, you know, he like, he was always the guy that his agent was trying to find and couldn't find. He was off on a camping trip. He didn't give a shit about I Hollywood. I want to be that guy. He didn't care about Hollywood at all. At all. Um, That's why you liked him, I think, too. A big part of it, probably. But I mean, uh, listen, I liked him. He was like into motorcycles and cars and yeah, jujitsu yeah, and he was scrappy. And that's another thing people don't know about Paul Walker. He was a tough tough he got in fights tough kid you don't want to fight paul walker you didn't want to fight him he's so pretty that you'd think that he's soft but that dude he was the first to jump out of the car if there was a beef he was the first to go protect a woman if she was getting mr like i remember a story where he was at a bar down south and some dude was like pushing his girl around and the dude was like this big bodybuilder dude and like was like you know what do you got to say pretty boy and paul knocked him out and broke his arm you know what i mean like he was a tough tough dude wow um and i, I never just, hear that stuff it's the truth man he was you didn't you know you i mean ask anybody who really knew him he was he was a he was a real one man and it's funny because he just looked so he was so good looking and he you know you, you wouldn't did, expect you it. wouldn't expect it but he was a he was a tough dude man and he was a a good dude and um it's a bummer um it was a real that's like that, that was, one, a, that that was one, a shock that one stuck me because he had a lot more to do and you know but anyway all he you can think of boy. is, I guess, in those moments is, hey, he always played by his rules. It was his, he had a good life. Yeah, he man. did his thing. He did, for sure. That's, that's what you, you hope for. For sure. For sure. But he, um, yeah, man, that's just a drag and shitty thing that happened that shouldn't have happened because, anyway. Yeah. Um, all right. This is uh, called Shit Talking with Scott Kahn. These are just the patrons, the top tier patrons. They get to ask questions. They support the podcast. They're awesome patreon.com slash society thanks for supporting the show uh rapid fire ready for rapid fire if you uh, feel I, like answering something you're like i've been ready the whole time let me just rapid fire this. wait i don't understand it's I'll... rapid fire i'm gonna give you a question you answer fast okay okay or you could take your time okay kyle f what do you miss about hawaii 50 kyle f oh kyle f kyle f uh kyle f kyle f <laughs> uh the lifestyle of being in hawaii you know just walking around with no shoes and surfing jiu-jitsu the culture there i really like the culture there Stone Age, how fun was it to film Gone in 60 Seconds with Nicolas Cage and the rest of that great cast? Fantastic movie. Uh, no, uh, yes, it was fantastic. I had a blast. And it was one of those, you know, setups where you're like, is this what movies are like? And it's not, but. Is he time, cool? Nick cannot be a cooler guy. I mean, Come on. I know I keep sounding like I'm just talking everybody up, but that's what I mean. Like, super talented, super smart, super nice, and great to be around. Funny. Like, imagine all of his goofball characters that he's played. That's kind of who he is, man. He's just like a fun... Favorite Nick role, Nick Cage role? Raising Arizona? 100%. Yeah. Nico P., what was it like being a roadie for Cypress Hill and House of Pain? That's the next time you're on. We're going to talk about that. Okay. Um, uh, I mean, listen, man. I dropped out of high school and went on a tour bus with Cypress Hill and House of Pain when I was 16 years old. There's, I mean... I... <laughs> Are you still friends with Be Real? Yeah, of course. I text him every once in a while. Yeah. We met a few times and he was like, yeah, he was, he's cool. He would text me here and yeah. there. Yeah, I mean, I, that's that, that he will always be like my big brother. I mean, I haven't talked to him in years, but like if he called me right now and said, hey, I need you to do this, I'd be there in two seconds. Um, yeah, man, time of my I'm 16 living on a tour bus with the biggest rap group in the world. How much I, pot was there on that trip? I mean, we would get it sent. First of all, the tour was sponsored by Graphics. Remember Graphics mm -hmm. Bongs? Um, we would get, this is before 9-11, we would get, uh, like a detergent box, like a box of Tide and they'd open the box of Tide, put like five ounces of weed in, in a, in a, in a, you know, like good weed. Cause we'd be in the middle of the country where there was shit weed. We'd have weed FedExed in 
this is before obviously way before weed was legal in in detergent boxes and so like there was always just ounces of nobody ever got in trouble no because it was you know in the in, in the, the in the what do you call it? leanne when you told your dad you wanted to be an actor what was his reaction any pieces of advice he gave you yeah, he the last thing he wanted me to do was be an actor. He was bummed. Yeah, he thought I was going to be a you know baseball player or something like that. You were a good baseball player. He thought so. You were. You're very humble. I was okay. What position? Shortstop. Yeah, yeah, but I was okay. I and a catcher. I caught and played shortstop. Do you ever want to play softball with me and my friends? I used to play in a softball league nonstop. I do yeah, I used to play in this really fun game, and then I just lost interest. Well, we do co-ed, so maybe you and the wife. It's no. fun. No one's great. Yeah, I'll do that. Will you? I mean, is it like a, a league where you have to no. show up? No, it's like, hey, Saturday at one, we're playing for an hour. I got to tell you, man, it's the, that's another one of those things. Like, I don't know how to play light. And that's one of those things. Like, I will show up and play hard and I will tear my ACL Just or some like stupid dad. shit. Just like But that's dad. what I mean. I like cut out the things. Like, I used to skate pools every day. I would go skate pools or go to Supreme and skate the bowl at Supreme or go skate. But you go. I go. I don't know how to, you know, th my wife's like, let's go snowboarding. I'm like, I don't want to go easy. I want to <laughs> blast 20 foot tabletops. Like, I, you know what I mean? So I don't know how to play light. Well, we'll make you bat opposite handed. Okay. Then you could be, go as hard as you want. Yeah. Is there a fence? No. Well, see, I just want a fence so I can hit it out and then just walk around. You could jack them. Can't yeah, you? yeah. Yeah. She <laughs> said, or he said, or they said. They all said. Charlene C, Varsity Blues, top 10 favorite movies of all time. First time you worked, we talked about Paul Walker. How much did you love playing Charlie Tweeter and what did you love most? Well, never mind that, just that question. Uh, I mean, still my, you know, my most, my most fun I've ever had making a movie. I mean, we, I was, am I supposed to be, are these supposed to be rapid fire, like quick answers? If you want, it doesn't have to be though. Um, yeah, I, I, I never, I didn't go to college. I didn't finish high school. So when I got to Texas, they set it up. So we were like, almost like a college dorm. And we had all these athletes from Texas that didn't make it to the pros that came and played with us. So to me, that was like college for me. We would, I mean, I had cheerleaders sleeping on my couch. I had football players sleeping in my apartment, me and Paul's apartment. God. We, the second half of the movie was all nights and we shot all the football stuff. The last 40 days of the movie were all nights. So we would literally go play football all night go eat together in the morning, jump in the lake, get on speedboats, then like go eat breakfast, work out and sleep for six hours and go back to work. So it was like the most fun I ever had in my life. I mean, you really have lived a good life. I have, man. I've been lucky, man. Jesus. Yeah. Uh, last question, Nathan J. Do you still keep in touch with the Oceans gang? Any talks to bring the crew back for another heist? You know, the, the, the boss of that movie was Jerry Weintraub and he passed. So I don't think that that'll ever happen. I know people rumor and talk about it. Um, uh, I'm still close with Cheadle. Um, and I think all those dudes as family, like I, I haven't seen George Clooney in four, five, but six if you years. Bumped into him, but if I bumped into him, I'd be like, where are you going? Can I come? You know what I mean? So he's that kind of guy. He is man. All of them. You know, I, I actually saw Brad a couple months ago and I hadn't seen him in years and it was like, you know, just you know still good like brothers isn't know? that refreshing ryan to know like the big guys the big stars are all nice people it's always the guys that are trying to prove themselves I, and, man i that's true I agree. or you know they do a tv show and they think you know or you know that's it they're you know you know i yeah yeah i mean I, it's i feel like there's you see someone in that position who's a dick he's probably insecure you know oh it's always insecurity one day as a lion is out everywhere now and you have to see it it's an amazing i mean amazing cast frank grillo jk simmons you i mean this is like if you love tarantino and the cone brothers and a little mix you like a little funny but a little drama and like surprises and it's a fun run 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 it's a fun it's a rud. paul rudd it is a paul rudd it's a paul rudd no it's really fun man it's like i hope people see this because there's you know the thing is there's so many choices out there mm. you know it's like oh what do i watch what do i watch but I think after they listen to this interview, they're going to go, hey, I, I want to go see this. That's right. You know what I mean? I and, so. and I know my patrons will check it out. And uh, I'm just happy for you, man. You're, you're living the dream. You're doing you're doing what you want. It's it, You have a family. Um, what's next? Season two for Alert? Season two. And then I have a couple shows I've been trying to get on, on you know, a couple TV shows. I, I wrote, man, during COVID, I wrote a whole season of a show about a stunt family that I'm trying to get on. I wrote a show about a mma family that i'm trying to get on so hopefully that one day they'll let me make a tv show do you write every day 
when I'm writing. How frustrated do you get when you don't? Because I, I've written a lot of things and very few of them have sold. And Me too. One has been made. What do you, how do you deal with that? Or are you just like, hey, I'm just going to keep doing it. It's not going to stop me. Yeah, keep going. And then also think about all those things that you, you know, I wrote a movie in 2002 that we made in 2007. So Five years. Yeah. Well, they say that about like um, uh, Dodgeball. It took them like 14 years to get that thing made. That's what I'm saying, man. So anything that you've written, you can always punch it back up make it better or you know someone will make it as is so i think of all the things not all of them but most of the things i've written a ton man i mean i got i know ever um, since i known you've been writing and so you know one day someone might go hey you got a, something like this and i go what about this and they go hey let's make it i mean there's you know i don't know there's a writer strike coming up i got a season of television all you got to do is push play you know so and you just wrote this movie the one that's out. The one that's out. Well, that's done. We made that. One, one. day's the line. I'm just saying you made it. Yeah, so you made wrote it. it and made it. That's right. There you go. Yeah. I love it. This has been a, a treat. At, at first, I was like, I don't know if he's going to talk about this. I don't know if he's going to talk about that. This is this was awesome, man. Thank you. Dude. This is really great. I appreciate you coming yeah, here. Yeah, man. Thanks. You, you don't do a lot of these. No, I've done maybe three of them. Ever? I think so. What What do you want? What's the end game? Like, what, when, what would make Scott Kahn... F absolutely fulfilled do you think you're insatiable or do you think that there's something out there like if i get a show that i created that i wrote and i can make that yeah but but, but then when that's over i'm gonna want to do it a different way right like mm -hmm. you can't insatiable but not insatiable that's a, i feel like that's like almost negative right like <laughs> we're creative people like i said in the beginning if you're if you gave me everything i wanted a hit tv show that i created and starred in and you know had all my friends in and you know if i'm done then then i'm i'm kind of like it's like giving up giving up a little bit it's mm -hmm. like with acting you know if you ever feel like that was it then or, or or i figured it out then it's time to quit you know like i still learn about acting every time i'm like oh shit i didn't know this or that and you learn stuff and what I if you just kind of lose your passion for something like i did i lost my passion for, for shooting photos right I haven't written a play. I mean, I used to write a play every year, no matter what. I haven't written a play in three years, so. Well, what about, hypothetically, it won't happen, but like, let's say you're like, I just don't really love being on set anymore. I, I don't. don't. I don't I don't, I don't. love acting as I much. I don't. You don't? Uh-uh. I don't love acting the way I used to. You could quit. I don't want to quit. Why? I mean, two, two parts. I mean, A, it's how I make a living. But you've made enough to make a living. You're good. Ten years on a show. Movies not and... really. No? no. No, man. Not really. I mean, yeah, to live comfortably in a certain way. But I mean, I like I said, I still want to travel. I want to do this. I want put your my, kids through college. All that stuff, man. You know, I want to do all that. I'm, I, I want my wife to sit in the front of the plane. You know what I mean? Like I want to go places, and you know. Um, I hear you. No, that makes sense. Yeah, but um, but I do it because I get paid to do it. But if someone would pay me the same amount to write and be a creator and not act, maybe I wouldn't act. I don't know. Right. And I look at I don't hate it. Right. It's a lot better than, you know. Digging a ditch. That's right. You're right. But it's not. I mean, when I was in my 20s, I was like. It's all you want to do. In, I want to. Me too. A million percent. You know? And thank God I'm not like that anymore because I certainly wouldn't have made been on Hawaii Five-0. But do you think now, with the exception of writing and creating, that it's more about the outcome than it is the process. In other words, you're, if you're acting, you know, you got to get up every day, work 14 hours, learn your lines, all this stuff. Would you rather just be like, it's great, if, you know, it's great, got a job, I, now I want it to be finished? I don't know what you mean. In other words, do you, uh, do you, um, do you like the process? I do, but it's it's a really good question now that I understand it. Yeah, sorry. No, no, it's not your fault. It's, I'm a little slow. Uh, I don't think about result, and that's probably why I don't watch the shit. To me, it's all about process. Wow, see, that's great. Especially that's great. as an actor. As a writer, director, different. But as an actor, I'm just there trying to make it good. Make my, be honest, I'm just doing that thing. That's it. I don't even give a shit how it ends up. In fact, I was on a show, that was, I was on the show for 10 years. I had a rule for myself. I didn't care if the camera was on me, behind me. I, I had to have one take where I felt like we were just in the scene. I didn't care if it was my close up. 
As long as I had that, I could go home and go, okay, I did my job good today. Because you know how many times, how many takes, this, that, and You the still other. want to be good. Still want to be great. Not even about good, just honest. Because, you know, we get to that point where we're like, ooh, I just, I tried to copy the take from three takes ago. Am I doing that? Like, you catch yourself doing that Get in stuff. your head. Get in your head. I want one take where I was just in the moment, where I just listened to my partner or partners in the scene. Right. If I get one of those, like I said, I don't care if it was the wide, I don't care if it was behind my head. As long as I get one of those, I can go home and be cool. So yeah, I'm not, as an actor, it's not about the result. And I think it's important to not, to, 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 to not be in the result, right? Because then yeah, it's a tricky thing, man. If you're in a scene going like, oh, I wanna, I hope it goes like this, you're already fucked. You're already- Be in the scene. Be in it. Yeah, be in don't it. Don't be ahead of it. Or just, yeah, man, don't play. If you can get to a place where nothing is planned, nothing is rehearsed, nothing is, That's I've done this already. Be. Let me just see what happens. You get one take like that. That was a good day as an actor. Eminem said that, didn't they? You only get one shot, opportunity, not now. Uh, lastly, uh, how old are your kids? I have a six-month-old and I have an eight-year-old. And what's the, what are their names? Josie and Maeve. Maeve is the eight-year-old? Uh, no, other way around. Josie is the eight-year-old. Mm -hmm. Did your pops get, obviously got to meet? Mm, Josie, not Maeve. Jos Josie. Yeah, yeah. That's great, right? She called him, this is the only thing I'll talk about with my kid. She called him Crazy Grandpa. That was his name. <laughs> really? Yeah. I love it. She To his face. Yeah, wait, hi, Crazy Grandpa. That was his name. He was Crazy Grandpa. <laughs> How did he feel about it? I think he liked it. <laughs> yeah. I love it. This has been a treat, man. Thanks for coming Thank out. you, brother. All right. Uh, it was a joy talking to him. A lot of times on the show, you, you don't know how a guest is going to open up or react. And he seemed like you can ask him whatever. He's like, yeah, whatever. Yeah. Talk about my dad. Talk about this. Talk about my life. Talk about if I like doing something. Maybe it's just like having shot in Hawaii for so long. It just sort of chills you out. Maybe. That probably has something to do with it. Yeah. Yeah. Gives you a little bit of perspective. I'd like to live in Hawaii. Yeah, it would be nice. Uh, we appreciate you listening. Scott, thank you for doing this podcast. It means a lot to me. And, um, you know, like I say many times in the podcast, go see his new movie. It's out. It's streaming. Um, Once a Lion? One Day as a Lion. One Day as a Lion. One Day as a Lion. Um, great cast. Funny, intense, cool, Tarantino style. Tarantino style. Um, that's it for the podcast except for our top tier patrons. Go to patreon.com slash inside of you. And I read the top tiers names every show. And uh, they also get merch boxes from me every four months. I just make nice personalized notes. I give cool stuff, I hope. Um, but it's really a great community. So patreon.com slash inside if you want to support the podcast. And of course, I have the Talkville podcast. Mm -hmm. Talkvillepodcast.com for tons of cool small Talkville merch. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, Talkville is a podcast that airs every Wednesday. Inside of you is every Tuesday. Make your Tuesdays and Wednesdays with uh, me, Ryan, and Welling. And that about wraps it up. Here we go. Top tiers. Nancy D, Leah S, Little Lisa, Yukiko, Jill E, Brian H, Nico P, Robert B, Jason W, Sophie M, Raj C, Joshua D, Jennifer N, Stacy L, Jamal F, Janelle B, Mike E, Eldon Supremo, 99 more, Santiago M. I just did a Zoom with most of the top tiers. And it was like for an hour and we talked about our life and stuff as briefly as we could because you can't really talk in depth with that many people. But it worked out. It was really fun. I posted a picture for you guys. Chad W, Liam P, Janine R, Maya P, Maddie S, Belinda N, Dave H, Sheila G. Uh, oh, oh, Sheila. Sorry. Brad D, Ray H, ha, da, da, cute baby. Tabitha T, hi, Tabitha. Tom N, Liliana A, Talia M. She was there. On um, the Zoom, Betsy D was there. Chad M, Angel M, Rhiannon and C, Corey K, Deb Nexon, Michelle A, Jeremy C, Brandy D, Joey M, Eugene and Leah. Where were you last night? Corey, Heather L, Jake B, Megan T, Angela. Megan was there. Angela F, Mel S, Orlando C, Caroline R was there. Christine S, Eric H, uh, Shane R, Andrew M, Zaruichi, 77. Karina was there. Amanda. Jen B, Kevin E, Stephanie K, Jor. L? <laughs> Yes. Jam and Jay was there last night. It was hard because they, some of them didn't have their name underneath on the Zoom. So I was like, I don't, I, and I was felt bad, but I was like, how would I know mm -hmm. who you are? We haven't met, except I've seen your name. When she said Jam and Jay, 
I knew it was Jam and Jay. Leanne J, Luna R, Cindy E, Mike F, Stone H, Miss S, Brian L, Katie B, Aaron R, Kendall L, House J, Meredith I, Charlene C, Kara C, Mary R, Sheena L, Jessica B, Kyle F, Marisol was there, Estevan G was there, Megan K was there, Mickey was there. Thank you, top tier patrons from the Hollywood Hills in Hollywood, California. I am Michael Rosenbaum. But our broad tails. And uh, wave to the camera. We love you guys. Thank you for uh, making this podcast yours today. Um, is that right? Making it yours? Making your choice. Thanks for making this podcast your choice. Anyway. Uh, and Ryan, always. Yeah. Hold on to Smallville. No. no. Oh, okay. Yeah, um, the other one. Be good to yourself. Be good to yourself. We talked about that on the Zoom. All right. Be good to yourself. Love you. Take care.